for people that you don't know if they are a threat. This is the wrong idea. It's the wrong setup. Same lessons in Iraq and Afghanistan. Maybe you're moving around to an LPOP. If you allow who you perceive to be your enemy to know everything that there is about you, you're making yourself a threat and a target. You try to remember everything that you learned. And one of those principles, of course, is to train as you fight. And so I know a lot of folks who are preparing for a fight, whether it's from a overseas adversary and they envision a, a Red Dawn event. Wolverines! Or whether or not they believe that their most likely enemy is a domestic one. Whatever your thoughts and your comments are, I'm looking forward to them down in the comments below. But as far as I can tell, this mindset of training like this is actually counterproductive. Of donning body armor, wearing a helmet, running around like we're G.I. Joe is probably the worst thing that you can do. And I hope that you give me a few minutes of your time as we delve into this. Just like Riggs is trying to delve into finding his ball. What's up, bud? See, there's something that I think that we're missing as a lesson learned from the past 60 or so years that this ultimately can result in, in you doing the exact opposite thing that you want to do, which is, of course, to protect yourself, your family, and your loved ones. We can argue all day about camo patterns and what's effective and what's not, but we're still missing the point. The point is that this is the wrong idea. It's the wrong setup for any of the likely, most likely, and least likely scenarios. Now as a disclaimer, I wanna push it out there right up front that is there a time and place to, to train like this? Absolutely, and I know a lot of good folks who get out there and train each and every single day running drills and pushing themselves hard in order to be ready for the fight. And therein lies the problem. What we look like right now is that we're looking for a fight. You see what I think what we need to do is take those lessons learned going all the way back to Vietnam, right? And understanding that the people that we were fighting was not a conventional army. They didn't look like one. Same lessons in Iraq and Afghanistan. And by presenting yourself in military garb, you're leaving yourself subject to being identified. And once you have target identification, it's too easy to locate, close with, and destroy. So we need to keep changing ourselves to make that targeting process a lot harder. Let's say you're walking around through a, an environment. Maybe it's permissive, maybe it's contested, maybe it's unknown. How much of a threat can others perceive you to be? if they do see you. You see walking around looking like you're a, a hiker just out enjoying the woods, maybe you're spending time with your dog, makes you a lot less of a, of a threat. Doesn't mean that you're not, doesn't mean that you don't stand ready and prepared to execute a battle drill or to react to contact, run through some kind of a IA drill. But you can carry a long rifle and nobody can ever even know it. You can carry a pistol and nobody will ever know it. How many of you advocate open carry as being greater than concealed carry? Probably not that many. And so why wouldn't we train like that with whatever threat that we're telling ourselves is the most likely threat that we have to prepare against. Just makes sense to me. Maybe you find yourselves in an urban environment. Can you carry a long rifle and not have anybody know? 
You bet you can. Move around with some freedom and security. Walk around anywhere you want. You got your duffel bag. Maybe you got a concealed carry. Maybe you don't. Point is, you can't tell what I have and, and or if I have anything at all to begin with. That I have both. A long rifle in my bag, broken down. And of course I'm carrying concealed. Nobody's the wiser. Nobody has any idea and they don't need to know your business until it's time to know your business. Maybe you're moving around to an LPOP. Carry your duffel bag into a building. Nobody's the wiser. You move up, you set up shop, and you start communicating back with your headquarters as far as how the situation is progressing. Hopefully you're not put in a position where you have to engage, but if that happens, then you run through your training. But the point is, is if you don't train like this, you're fooling yourselves. Because operating like this is much less harder to discern a threat than running around like you're geared up for a Call of Duty action game, right? And I think that's part of the problem. There's too many folks out there who are learning their tactics through a game, and they're learning it through television and through movies. And they're saying to themselves, this is how I trained in the past, maybe when you were wearing the uniform. This is how we train in all of these games and simulations. So this is how I need to continue to train. I need to train as you live each and every single day. And I don't know anybody who runs around 24 seven, geared up, ready to kick in some doors, wearing their full kit. You don't, probably don't even carry your kit in your vehicle. So however you live and however you get about day to day, that's how you need to train most often. Well, some of this will be situation dependent based off of your location, where you're at. Running around all the ranges that you can with 80,000 pound backpacks, carrying the kitchen sink, running ACOGs and other night vision devices and thermals. You got 30 different weapon platforms and all of them are stored under your bed or in the safe of your mom's house. <laughs> I mean, what the hell are we doing? We have to get smarter than this. Look back throughout history, especially if each and every engagement that the United States has had either difficulty in or has been unable to have a decisive victory. And what's the commonality? What are the, the common threads in these? Well, one of them is that we're fighting an unconventional force fighting people that you don't know if they are a threat or not. You can't identify them. Think about that. So while you're out running and gunning in full body armor with drop leg holsters and magazine pouches, you're making yourself a threat and a target doing the absolute worst thing that you could be doing. The team, let me know what you think down in the comments below about this conversation of training as you fight, but ultimately training as you live each and every single day. Look forward to it. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked. I know my thoughts uh, may be a little incoherent, maybe could have been put together a little bit better, but There's certainly, I see it on the channel, you know, in comments, things that people are concerned about. I see it looking out at other folks' content of how they are training and messages that they are, are pushing out. And individually, like, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it, if that makes sense. Like, there, there's time and place for, for all of this stuff. And, and even here on this channel, like, I, I get out and do different things, but same principle applying to some thoughts that raised a lot of eyebrows and uh, last year and caused a, a lot of commies to cry 
is that we can't be so rigid in our line of thinking is to suppose that doing this one thing and this one approach is the end-all be-all answer to the issues that we believe that we're facing, right? You have to be much more broad in your approach. You have to be taking in this element and taking in that element, taking in this piece and, and fusing it all together and understanding that, you know, obscurity in your operations, obscurity in your training, obscurity in how you are facing it and dealing with the world is, is paramount to your security. If you allow who you perceive to be your enemy to know everything that there is about you, then you're fooling yourself into thinking that you're going to be able to survive. So just a few thoughts. And on that note, I'm sure that there's uh, quite a few folks out there who filled up my flask today, which if you didn't know is in fact filled with the tears of a commie. So, you know, it's, it's ironic, but I appreciate all the tears. Ah, so does Riggs. Man, I appreciate you guys. Stay stoked. Down. Stay. Break. Down. Stay. Break. Go find the ball. Go find your ball. Good boy. Good boy. That's a good boy, Riggs. That's a good boy. Oh, that's such a good boy. He's tuckered. But he still wants to play. Am I a good boy? Hmm? Am I a good boy? Team, if you want to master your craft, develop your tactical virtue, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on future content. Consider becoming a channel member. It's going to give you exclusive access to content not available to anybody else. I appreciate you guys. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.